So I'm at a convention now, and here's the convention. And what do you do when you have work? You bring work with you at the convention, so you can do the work over there. <laughs> Just like that. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Wall Wall Art. And today we're going to do, um, let's talk about Justice League, uh, a, a project that I did for DC Comics. DC Comics just recently sent me a FedEx box. These are our comp boxes. So I opened them up and this is the book that I worked on. It was for uh, Justice League number seven, right over here. Justice League number seven. So I inked over uh, Jimmy Chung. Uh, I only done two pages. So they sent me comp copies. So the comp copy looks like this. Uh, here's a regular edition. Uh, along with the regular edition, they also sent me variants. So here's a Jim Lee uh, Superman variant edition. And then on top of that, they also sent me a sketch cover uh, that that was pencil, like a pencil edition. So there's that. And then this is pretty cool. There was also like a, I don't know if this is chrome or foil. Uh, chrome foil edition, but this is like pretty nice and reflective. So this is a nice, nice book. And along with that is a trade paperback that collected all the editions. So this trade paperback is uh, Justice League, to the totality right over here. Here's how here's how the book looks like okay, right over here. But instead of me showing you the whole book this time, just because I only in two pages, let me show you the two pages that I worked on. So right over here. This just Lee, we're gonna find the two pages that I worked on. So here's one page with Nestro. This is one of the pages that I've inked. And then the other page is uh, this one. Right over here, this page, right over here. Uh, the panel borders is a word uh, that kind of, you can kind of read out boom in the panel borders. So I'm gonna segue this into the original art that I worked on. So. When I get the pencils, the, it, the pencils looks like this, okay? And then the first thing I usually do when I ink, ink is I'll ink all the panel borders. So this was inked over original pencils. So instead of uh, inking on blue lines, I inked on original pencils. I get the pencils uh, from Jimmy, he was FedEx it to me. And then once I get them, uh, I will make a scan of the pencils just in case I spill ink or something. So if, if there's a disaster, at least I have the image of it. And then after I scan it, I will start inking it. And this is the first step I go when I ink uh, original cardboard. I will ink out all the panel borders. So without further ado, let's check out how I ink the panel borders. Very slowly, very carefully. Even inking panel borders is still an art form. So check it out. <laughs> So I have an 18 inch ruler that I use to uh, rule out lines for all the longer, all longer lines. I use the 18 inch uh, metal aluminum ruler. So I'll, I'll align it from the top panel to the bottom panel, making sure that, you know, all the panels align correctly. Usually I would just do it from top to bottom, or in this case, uh, left to right going through all the panels. If you don't do that, uh, you're going to get a panel that's like, uh, tilted or off center or a little bit off but I, I like to go from the top to bottom that's why I use a, a longer 18 inch ruler so here I just uh, peek over the ruler make sure you start and stop at the same time and then right here I would do all the uh, lines going in one direction first this way I don't have to uh, spin the page all the time so as you notice in this panel uh, this panel that I'm making right here, it actually forms the word BOOM, B-O-O-M. So I'm inking all the lines going in one direction all the way down first. So the f right here, there's a little b o so I'm inking the little O area. So as you notice, I'm keeping all the lines uh, perpendicular, uh, horizontal, like we see in the video right now. Just going from top to bottom. Now, the reason I do this is if I were to ink the whole uh, left and right side while, while I'm doing this, 
uh, the ink may not be dried. So as I'm going down, I'm also waiting for the ink to dry before I go back over and ink the perpendicular direction. So right here, I just keep going all the way down. And notice that when I'm inking, I'll start um, from the top first and then I'll ink all the way to the bottom. Again, ink takes a little bit of time before it dries. So if you say, if you are inking the bottom lines first and then you go upwards, there's a very good chance that the palm of your hand or your arm is gonna smudge that ink area. And when it's not dry, you're just gonna create a big smudge. So always ink uh, from top going down, even with paddle borders, ink paddle borders top going down. Uh, ink all one brush first, either the vertical lines all the way from top to bottom or the uh, or the horizontal lines all the way from top to the bottom. In this case, um, the page is turned towards the right. So again, I use the 18 inch ruler and I go one direction, not one direction, but parallel going downwards. And again, always uh, try to look over the ruler. I know when you're holding a ruler like this, uh, there's a good chance that you won't be able to see where it starts and ends. Just kind of uh, look over it. Okay. Another thing to remember is when you're holding the ruler, uh, make sure your left hand is holding the ruler tight. I had instances where I'm not holding it tight and then when I'm making a longer line, my right hand just pushes the ruler and while you're making a line, that line starts to curve a little bit. So make sure you're holding the ruler tight. This ruler, ruler I have, on the back of the ruler, there's a, a cork on it. So it's a cork back ruler, so it keeps I mean, it keeps traction to the paper and the drawing table pretty well. So right here, kind of uh, the ink kind of clogged up a little bit. So I go away from the paper and I'll shake the repeatograph and then to make sure it's working. Like right there, you just saw me shaking it. So I'm shaking it just to make sure it's uh, flowing. Now I'll turn the, the paper and I'll ink the other side. Uh, right here, just a few more lines and then I'll ink those. The repeatograph I'm using is the uh, the green, the green pin, and the green pin. There's a size on it. If you look on the bottom of, a, if you're using a repeatograph, it's the three over point eight zero. That's the size of the repeatograph that I'm using. <clears throat> okay. After I finish inking all that direction, I'll turn it uh, forty-five degrees perpendicular, and then I'll ink the top line first. Well, the top where right now is on the bottom, but I'll, I'll have that uh, paper closer towards me. So when I'm making, I'll turn the page upside down or right side up or 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right. But the, the ideal is to have that area closer towards my drawing table towards me. So I'll eat that first. And then I'll turn it around and again, uh, I'll start inking from the top all the way to the bottom. Now you'll see me using uh, this 18 inch ruler. If you have a 12 inch ruler, um, it'll work, but an 18 inch ruler is much easier. Uh, when I have an 18 inch ruler, I just align the ruler to the lines. But if you have a 12 inch ruler, you have to make sure, oh, am, am I, is it too much to the left, too much to the right? But if you have an 18 inch ruler, which is larger than the paper size, it's easier. Uh, one less thing to worry about when you're uh, aligning the ruler to the to the lines <clears throat> and take your time inking slowly now when you're inking panel borders try not to tilt your repeatograph pin uh, if you're tilting it there's a good chance that you're wobbling it also so just stay perfectly 90 degrees and don't press too hard on these repeatograph pins they're not quills and they're not brushes they don't do line width unless you go back over and draw over the line for the most part these repeatograph creates a dead flat line weight so just go oh, right there do you see me I, I didn't hold the ruler tight enough with my left hand so you notice that the ruler kind of tilted so that's the mistake i made there so i, I would have to wait for that area to dry first oh, right there i just bent the ruler up to make sure that i'm aligned sometimes i can't see it so i'll bend the ruler just to make sure i align so the mistake um i'll leave it there first because with the mistake, you still have to wait for it to dry before you white out it. If you start whiting out ink that's not dry, you're going to create a great mess there. So I 
usually wait for areas that uh, are dry before I bring out the white out. So right there, I'm pulling out the ruler just to be sure that I see where I'm uh, lighting up those uh, the ruler with. Okay, now these little notches, you can do one at a time. I like going from left to right. This way, it's all uh, evenly across the board. Okay, so this panel it spells out the word D-O-O-M, DOOM. A uh, pretty nice effect. The penciler on this page is uh, Jimmy Chung, and he did a really great job on the uh, design of the, uh, the pages. It's like two panels, and then the word "doom," which is a series of uh, four panels, which also shows the passage of time. And then it creates one whole larger scene, and then just a special effect word "doom" on it. So again, hold on to your ruler. Be sure your left hand holds it tight so it doesn't move. And then use your longer 18-inch uh, ruler and just ink it all the way across. Just like that. Not too hard, not rocket science, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, align the left corner and the right corner of the panel and then just ink that line. Go one time all the way you cross. Um, very rarely do I have to go back twice. If you go back twice, sometimes you'll make that line a little bit thicker. So I just like going one time all the way across. And don't, again, don't press your technical pin down too hard. And I've broken a few tips in the past. So if you just glide the repeatograph pin, it works better. That's another thing to remember. Uh, you're not drawing with a pencil or marker, uh, when you press down, it doesn't really make the ink come out more. It, it just better, there's a good chance of you breaking it. Now I'm switching over to an acrylic marker. Now, uh, I'm sorry, I'm switching over to an acrylic uh, ruler. This is a, a triangle ruler, which is a 40, it creates a 45 degree triangle, 90 degree triangle. I'm using this and a white gel pen to white out that uh, area that I uh, made a mistake on. So white out that. And then notice that the uh, acrylic ruler, I have pennies underneath the ruler. I, what I've done is I just taped the pennies underneath the ruler. And I like these acrylic uh, rulers because I can see through it. This way, I, at a glance, I can see where it's lining up. Now, another thing with this acrylic ruler, ruler with the pennies is I've raised the ruler higher. So the whole ruler doesn't touch the drawing board only the pennies touch it so while I'm making this area I'm also making sure that my pennies doesn't touch any of the inked areas that way I don't there's a good chance that I will smudge so there it is there's this page with all the panel borders inked pretty straightforward maybe just took about maybe a good 10 15 minutes not that bad so there's all panel borders and there you have it. That's me inking the panel borders on Justice League number seven, that one one page with uh, the word boom, which was also panel border. Let me show you how the inks looks like in black and white. So here we have it, right over here. Okay, so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, share, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button, and check out my website, wallthewallart.com. Check out my Patreon page. And until next time, be good. And if you're an artist and you're doing comics, try to ink panel borders like it's an art form. Very cool. Take care.